Hello and welcome to Quartz Light, your car brochure channel. And in today's episode, it's the turn of the Datsun 120Y. Welcome back and here on Quartz Light, we look at car brochures from around the world here on YouTube for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. So if you're interested in cars and car brochures, give us a subscribe. It really helps us on this little tiny channel that we have. So we're in the 70s today, looking at this, the Datsun 120Y. Quite an interesting little car. It's only a short brochure, this one, so quickly grab a cup of tea and we'll settle down and have a look a bit more about this 70s Japanese car. So here is today's brush, and as it says on there, the Datsun Sunny 120Y GLS Saloons. This includes the two-door and the four-door. And this brush is from around about 77. And in the 70s, this was an important car for Datsun and became, you know, second place among sort of like the foreign market cars. At a time where in the UK, there was a certain resistance to buy foreign cars as foreign cars were just garbage. Um, but obviously this was a good little car. It was reliable, very high equipment levels for such a small car. And most importantly of all, it had those and it was cheap. It did very well. And don't forget at this time, a lot of strikes in the UK. So a lot of delays in building UK cars, particularly British Leyland. So it kind of like snuck in there and did very well so like i say an important little car rear wheel drive of course this is only a very small brush but this is showing like i said the two and four doors but that's not the only 120 y you could get have a look at this and by this i mean a car i don't remember the 120 y van i don't remember ever seeing a 120 y van Love these wheels, just black painted wheels and these little caps on there. And the both these both brushes are both from seventy seven, um, so being sold at the same time. And like I say, I don't really remember this van version. Let's zoom in on some of the images first on this uh, saloon, and then we'll have a look at this van. I think front end, as you can imagine, lots of nice chrome, which I quite liked. And even though it kind of like sat quite high, did the 120Y, I kind of like, quite like the styling. They did last quite well. Obviously rust was an issue, but I certainly remember these running around into the 80s for sure. So they were good, reliable little cars, like I said. These wheel trims are particularly unusual. If the camera will just focus in on that for a moment. There we go, these like metal... Um, wheel coverings or hubcaps whatever you want to call them very unusually styled I don't think I particularly like them but somehow it kind of like goes with the car only one mirror by the looks of it quite you know looks like quite vinyl seats but we'll look at the specifications in a moment and that unusual back end that kind of like slopes away but overall I quite like the styling of these, strangely. Like I say, it just came at the right time for Datsun, like I say, UK strikes. Kind of like snuck in there with a reliable car. And remember, British Leyland particularly was getting a bit of a reputation for getting unreliable cars around this stage as well. So you can certainly imagine how some people might be tempted by these, even though there was always that sort of foreign cars are rubbish kind of like mentality in the 70s for sure. Let's have a look at this van as well. Like I say, I think the, the striking point for me is these just like black wheels with the hubcaps. They almost remind me of, you know, um, American spec police cars really with these black wheels and little hubcaps on there. Let's zoom in a little bit further. And then we can look at them rear lights and then chrome rear bumpers. But mainly we can see how that little Datsun 120Y badge is shot of the inside you can see kind of like where the sort of like pressings for the windows would be for the estate version no doubt very plain though like I say 
We've just got them basic steel wheels with them hubcaps. And then we can see that front end styling. Let's have a look on the rear of these brochures and see what specifications you could get because this is only tiny little brochures really. So we may as well stick with the van first. We'll have a look at a little bit of this text and the specifications, I think. 120Y van, compact, tough, hard working. That's the new Datsun 120Y van. A long awaited small commercial vehicle with all the qualities of reliability and economical operation for which Datsuns are renowned. The 120Y van is based on the more world famous Datsun Sunny of which over 500,000 examples are sold in the world markets every year. So you get well proven sensible engineering that ensures dependable performance at extremely low costs. The 1171cc engine is of straightforward design yet gives lively performance and remarkable economy using low grade petrol. It then goes on to tell us there's a low flat floor to the cargo area with a high lift tailgate to provide easy access and give some protection while loading when the weather is bad. In the driving cab, the 120Y is more like a small saloon than a van with very light responsive controls and an interior design for comfort and practical use. Two individual bucket seats are upholstered in hard wearing vinyl leatherette and the floor is covered with heavy duty mats. Easy to read instruments are housed in a safety design fascia. While through floor heaters and ventilation, two speed wipers and electric screen washers are part of the deluxe standard equipment. Take a look at the new Datsun 120Y van. It's designed in a business-like way for business people. Apologies for the camera swaying a little bit there. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the images. So here is an interior, a very plain stripped out interior really. Particularly when you look at the floors, you almost could imagine like washing that out, can't you? If we go further down, we get more of a side view. Again. I think them floors are very interesting, that sort of leatherette seats aren't particularly nice are they? And then down the bottom we get another image of the rear of the van. Specification time, yeah that 1171cc engine, we'll just quickly move through it, although you can always pause the screen if you want to look through all the information there. Tells you about the transmission, so it's a four speed synchro mesh gearbox. Suspension, steering, brakes, almost like drum all round, wheels and tyres, dimensions, cargo area, and its weight and payload capacity. Now let's move back to that little saloon that we started with. So back to the GLS saloons, remember that's two and four door. Let's have a look at some of this text and have a look at some of these images and some of the specifications for the saloon. It says the 120Y two and four door saloons are quality cars, attractively styled with a spacious interior to offer you first class comfortable motoring at a sensible price. The front seats recline and all seats are upholstered in luxurious cloth trimmed with vinyl leverettes so a little bit nicer than the vans for sure. Deep pile fitted carpets add to the refinement of the interior while comfort for all the occupants is ensured by a really efficient heating and ventilation system. I don't know if that's maybe a little bit of a dig at some of the UK cars at the time. Concern for the driver is reflected in many aspects of the 120Y design. The instruments are clearly visible and all controls are light to operate. The slick gear chains are a joy to use and an automatic gearbox is available if you prefer the car to do the thinking. Performance, the 120Y is brisk and lively with a maximum speed of 90 so that motorway cruising at 70 is relaxed and undemanding. And I think this is the real uh, kicker reel here. The superior equipment of the 120Y saloons includes two wave band push button radio, tinted glass, heated rear window, head restraints, clock, two speed wipers, electric washers, radial tires, reversing lights 
hazard flashes and lots more. Both models are available in high gloss metallic. But if you think about, you know, the 70s and, you know, a, and remember this wasn't a particularly very expensive car. So an inexpensive car in the UK at the 70s, this would really trump that just by looking at those um, equipment levels. And like I say, it's a bit of a love it or hate it design. I'm not sure I did like it in the 80s, thinking back when I saw the second hand one still driving around. But looking back, I think I do quite like the styling now. Strange how your mind changes like that. Here is the dashboard. You can see it's a bit better equipped now than that van version. All them little places, there was blanking places now, things like radios and etc, etc. And it looks like we've got a proper carpet in there. All the luxuries. There's the seats. And like I say, it does have that sort of uh, nasty sort of uh, uh, vinyl leverette sides. But at least it has a bit of cloth in the middle, so it looks a little bit nice. But it's very dark interior, really. Here is a look at that radio you get. And getting a radio in a car in the 70s was a bit of a novelty in some ways. You usually had to pay more for that. Particularly like this little D up here, if I can manage to... Uh, where am I? That D there for Datsun looks quite nice, doesn't it? And this is what it refers to as that really effective um, heater and ventilation system. And if you look down the bottom while we're here, bottom right hand corner, that 77 is meaning this is a, from 1977, which is actually the same as the van. Specifications, we've still got that same seven, sorry, 1171cc engine, still got a four speed synchronized gearbox, and it tells you about the steering and suspension. And if we move down, brakes, now we've got servo assisted brakes, discs at the front, drums at the rear, wheels and tyres. And then if we pull back, we can see the dimensions. Maximum payload, maximum towing weight. So there we go, that's a quick look at the Datsun Sunnit 120Y. And this wasn't only successful in the UK, this was a bit of a worldwide car. A very successful car all round and really put a foothold for Datsun who of course eventually went to become Nissan. Thank you for watching Quartz Light today. Many more brochure reviews coming up in the near future, so please do like and subscribe. We'll see you very soon. Take care and goodbye.